So now, as we continue talking about the peripheral nervous system, we'll entitle this next flowchart PNS2. And what we're going to focus on in this flowchart is again the efferent motor system. And we talked about one part of the efferent motor system in a little bit of detail in the previous video, and that was the motor system side of this part of the peripheral nervous system as a whole. And what we said was we'll get back to this other part, and the other part was the autonomic nervous system. So let's take a look at what this involves and how this is a part of the efferent motor system as a whole. So the autonomic nervous system is a subcomponent of this component, the efferent motor system, of the peripheral nervous system. So let's take a look at what it means to be a part of this autonomic nervous system. This part of the efferent motor system contains efferent neurons, much like the name implies. But these efferent neurons are going to be from the central nervous system to effectors like the glands, like the heart, and also like smooth muscles. What you should notice about all of these effectors as compared to the motor system effectors that we saw in the previous video is that these effectors are very much involuntary and are in control of involuntary actions. These are things that we don't need to think about and we'll get into that idea a little bit later. So for right now, just know that we have efferent neurons to these associated structures within the autonomic nervous system. In addition, the autonomic nervous system contains no receptors. There is no sensation, no reception of sensation, whatever it may be, but instead just effectors within this part of the peripheral nervous system. So we'll write that down, just effectors, meaning that there's going to be effectors to muscles and glands all in an attempt to carry out a specific response, a carry out an effect, and that's why we have just effectors within the autonomic nervous system. This autonomic nervous system is divided into three sub-subdivisions now. We actually call them divisions now instead of components. And these three divisions are highlighted on figure 49.9. So let's take a look at these three divisions in a little bit more detail down on the bottom here. So we'll sort of extend our knowledge of all of this and it's encompassed within these three divisions. So let's take a look at what it means to be a part of the autonomic nervous system as a division of the autonomic nervous system. The first division to highlight is the enteric division. So this is a part of the autonomic nervous system, which is a part of the efferent motor system, which is a part of the peripheral nervous system, which is a part of the nervous system as a whole. So as you can see, a very complex organization of the nervous system within more complex organisms like vertebrates. So what is the enteric division in control of? This is in control of the DT, the digestive tract. And specifically, the enteric division, what we should remember, is that it controls two main components of the digestive tract, components that we'll understand when we look at digestion a little bit later in this course. This controls the pancreas and also the gallbladder. So both are integral parts of digestion and thus the enteric division is going to be involuntarily going to be controlling um, the digestive tract, specifically the pancreas and gallbladder. Now the other two divisions of the autonomic nervous system are as follows. They are the sympathetic division and that is opposed by, antagonistically opposed by, the parasympathetic division. So we'll write that over here, parasympathetic division. So these two things actually counteract each other, and we'll see how in just a second. So let's talk with the let's talk about the sympathetic division first. This is going to be the part of the autonomic nervous system that many people recognize as the part that's devoted to the fight or flight responses. So let's write that down. Fight or flight responses in times of extreme stress. So when the body is encountering an emergency, a moment of extreme stress, not just any old stress, but extreme stress, this is when the sympathetic division 
of the autonomic nervous system will be activated. This is when you will get a fight or flight response. What does that encompass? When we have this within the body, a message that says fight or flight, in this moment of extreme stress, we notice that the heart rate is going to increase. We notice that the respiration rate is also going to increase, and those two sort of go hand in hand. And we also notice that the metabolic rate increases. And if you remember, metabolism is all about building and breaking down things. Specifically, I would say that the metabolic rate, I would say the catabolic rate is the specific portion of metabolism that's going to increase because you're going to break down lots of glucose to get lots of energy in order to increase your respiration, in order to increase your heart rate. All of that is going to be occurring during this sympathetic drive that's happening throughout the body. In addition to these increases, what you also notice is that the body will dilate. It will open up several of the air passages that it utilizes to exchange environmental substances with. Now these air passage upon dilation will increase two major things and we've talked about this before. They will increase oxygen intake and thus because oxygen is coming in at a higher rate you will also get glucose within the blood at a higher rate specifically I would say glucose delivery because oxygen as the terminal electron acceptor is going to allow for glucose metabolism catabolism, to happen at a much higher rate and thus these air passages are going to create lots of oxygen to come into the body which means lots of glucose will be broken down. Now all of these things are being increased but there's actually going to be something that's going to be decreased during this sympathetic event and that would actually be anything associated with digestion. We're actually going to decrease any digestive capabilities or functions right now because at this moment of extreme stress, it's simply not important. So let's write that down. Digestion is simply not important right now. And that's going to be sort of the, uh, in, in, this is the opposite of these other two because these other two over here, these are basically super increasing uh, of these events, whereas this is going to be a direct decrease of an event. Now, let's take a look at the parasympathetic division and compare. The parasympathetic division, many people already know this, is in charge of the idea of resting and digesting. So this is going to contain and have within it rest and digest responses, as opposed to fight or flight responses. So here we have rest and digest responses, and these are in an attempt to conserve and also restore. So conserve plus restore energy. That's what we want to do when we are activating the parasympathetic division. Resting and digesting in other words. So what's going to happen when we activate this part of the autonomic nervous system? Here we see a decrease in heart rate. So we see a lot of relaxation and we therefore also see a decrease in respiration rate. And so we're not basically putting our bodies into overdrive right now. What we're actually doing is devoting a lot of our metabolic energy to digest, to do exactly what the parasympathetic division function implies, resting and digesting. So here we're going to have a direct increase in digestion. Overall, what you need to understand about both of these is that we have basically between both of them, which I'll do on the side over here, basically parasympathetic versus so we'll put versus here, the sympathetic, what you get here is an antagonistic relationship. Both of these will be antagonistic. They will go against each other in order to maintain homeostasis. So basically it, it goes down like this. What we have is the environment around us and what we need to do is based off the environmental cues we need to maintain our balance. We need to maintain homeostasis. And the best way to do that is to activate the parasympathetic division when necessary or activate the sympathetic division when necessary. So when you activate one or the other, you are technically then deactivating whichever one has not been activated. That's the antagonistic word here that we use for that reason. When the parasympathetic is on, the sympathetic is off and vice versa. That's the way we maintain a balance. 
we ensure that the correct system, the correct division of this peripheral nervous system is functioning based off of the environmental cues that are within the environment. So basically the summary of this idea of the peripheral nervous system is the following. Even though we have this great amount of organization and great amount of sort of uh, different classes and subtypes and subcomponents, be aware that the nerves within the body are going to have components of both afferent and efferent axons, both traveling in bundles. There's going to be a lot of mixing and intertwining between both. It's not exclusively one or the other. And that's highlighted well when you look at several of the different figures associated with the peripheral nervous system. In the next video, what we're going to be now looking at is the central nervous system again, but again, we're going to conclude this lecture by focusing on the brain because we briefly went over it. Now that we understand the peripheral nervous system and the many different subcomponents, let's go back to the brain and understand its importance within the central nervous system.